By any measure, size, cost, or sheer sweep of vision, the greatest estate ever created in Southern California was the Doheny family's Greystone. Built in the late 1920s by oil man Edward Lawrence Doheny, the enormous 55-room Gothic mansion would become the centerpiece of the 429-acre Doheny Ranch in Beverly Hills. Doheny was the first man to discover oil in the West on a vacant lot near downtown Los Angeles in 1892. He and his partners then bought up the oil fields from Bakersfield to Mexico to dominate California's booming petroleum industry. His own large Victorian mansion in downtown Los Angeles' Chester Place is legendary, but he wanted even better for his only child, Edward Lawrence Jr., or Ned, who had a growing family. Rather than build a home in the already fading West Adams District, Ned Doheny set aside 22 acres at the southern end of his father's Beverly Hills Ranch for his own estate. In 1925, he hired Gordon Kaufman as his architect and Paul Thien as his landscape architect. Construction of the house and the ground started the following year. Two years and an estimated $4 million later, Ned Doheny and his family moved into Greystone. The mansion had been built to stand for centuries. The gray Arizona slate, which gave the 46,000 square foot residence its name, was merely a veneer for the three foot thick steel frame concrete walls. Even the steeply pitched roof was reinforced with concrete. The fortress-like graystone sat on a prominent hillside, looking out over the red tile roofs of Beverly Hills all the way from downtown to the sea, just as medieval castles triumphantly loomed over their domain below. The ranch property became a virtually self-contained principality with its own security force, fire department, and water supply. The 22-acre estate grounds surrounding the mansion originally included a seven-room Gothic gatehouse, a 15,000-square-foot stable, 16 acres of formal gardens and wooded areas, a guest house, a windmill, reflecting pools, two lakes, greenhouses, tennis and badminton courts, man-made waterfalls, and two swimming pools. Upon entering the mansion, the hand railings and arched frame stairway typify both the opulence and the craftsmanship of the era and of the entire Greystone property. All of the oak banisters, balustrades, and rafters were hand carved, while each of the seven chimneys was designed and crafted by a different artist. The floors of the Grand Hall showcased black and white inlaid marble, and an elaborate living room held a balcony where musicians often performed on special occasions. The kitchen featured a pantry built to secure a large adjoining wall safe that was used to store the family's silver and gold services. The mansion was built with a servant's quarters which occupied two floors of the east wing and accommodated a living staff of 15 servants. There are 55 livable rooms within the over 46,000 square feet of living space in the mansion. While the mansion's bedrooms were spread throughout the second floor, the master bedroom suite was located in the west wing and featured an accompanying sitting room, two baths, a dressing room, and a massage room. In the north wing were the two oldest boys' bedrooms, containing a circular staircase leading out onto an adjacent recreation wing that contained a movie theater room, an original Brunswick bowling alley, billiard room, and a hidden bar. Unfortunately, Ned didn't get to enjoy his estate for long. Late on Saturday night, February 17th of 1929, two gunshots rang out in the house. Ned Doheny and his secretary, Hugh Plunkett, lay dead. It was front page news in Los Angeles. According to Doheny family spokesman, Hugh Plunkett snuck into the estate grounds, silently let himself into the house with his key, shot Ned to death, then killed himself. Hugh Plunkett, the family physician added, had been highly excited and nervous in recent months and strung out on sleeping pills the night of the shooting. Some were eager to accept that Plunkett shot Ned. Others claimed Ned shot the secretary and then himself. 
Still others claim the father caught them together and killed them both. We'll never know. Whatever happened was covered up by the Beverly Hills Police within 48 hours. The story was brought back to life in the Academy Award-winning movie, There Will Be Blood, which was shot at the actual mansion. Following the death of her husband, Lucy Smith Doheny stayed at Greystone with her five children. In 1932, she married oil man Lee Batson. Before the days of swimming pools, you either played tennis or you went horseback riding. So almost every state north of Sunset Boulevard had its own stables. You could ride your horses all the way down Sunset Boulevard as far as the Pacific Ocean. There were over 50 miles of trails. And when you think about what life was like 100 years ago, even 60 years ago, this was how people spent their leisure time. One of the most celebrated families who used horseback riding for leisure were the Dohenies. They would leave Greystone Mansion where they had their stables, cross Coldwater Canyon to the park beyond the reservoir, and arrive at the Doheny Ranch. The ranch house is still there to this day, and that big three-acre park in front is where they would sit, enjoy drinks and libations, and all kinds of barbecue. By the time it was over, the sun had set, and as they headed back, many were so wasted that they just got on their horses because the horses already knew the shortest way back to the Doheny stables. In those days, there was no traffic, and even the street sign said, horses have the right of way. In 1955, the Batson sold the majority of the original land to the Paul Truesdale Corporation, developers of Beverly Hills' prestigious Truesdale Estate Homes. The following year, Lucy and her husband sold for approximately one and a half million dollars the remaining 18 plus acre parcel, including Greystone Mansion, to Henry Crown of Chicago-based Parkway Corporation. Mr. Crown, however, never formally occupied the site, but instead leased it out as a popular filming location, a legacy Greystone still maintains today. Oh man. No. He's back. No thanks to you. Where's the fucking money, Lebowski? I'm going in as a highly skilled legal advisor. This is really good. No more being looked down upon by people who think they're better than I am because they're rich. From now on, I'm going to be respected by people who think they're better than I am because they're rich. Nobody recognized it as the British Spy Academy in Austin Powers Gold Member or when the kitchen was transformed into a funeral home in Death Becomes Her. A little death. Death? Oh no, Dr. Manville, you can't give him any character or death. People have to recognize him. The old mansion was special affected into a futuristic children's hospital for Star Trek Into Darkness. Greystone was turned into a sanitarium called Whitestone for the crazy antics of Jerry Lewis in The Disorderly Orderly. In 1965, the city of Beverly Hills purchased Greystone for $1,100,000 and built a new reservoir beneath the hill behind the mansion, thereby destroying many of the gardens, including the hillside waterfall. After the city purchased Greystone, it was leased out to the American Film Institute, which used the property for its headquarters and school. On September 16, 1971, the entire 18-plus acre site, including its centerpiece, Greystone Mansion, was formally dedicated as a public park by the city of Beverly Hills. Five years later, on April 23, 1976, Greystone Estate was officially recognized as a historic landmark and was entered into the National Register of Historic Places. Greystone stands today as a permanent testament to the style and elegance of the golden age 
of the legendary estates of Beverly Hills. 